appreciate it. We're going to move right on. Um, I, you know, looking at the next, uh, the title of the next presentation, I realize me and the next presentation have something common. For instance, I have a self-healing skin. Come to find out somebody from Netherlands, not somebody actually, we have a doctor, uh, Erik uh, Schlagnen, who knows everything about self-healing asphalt. Is that true? Do we actually have something like that? Ladies and gentlemen, here we go. Okay, thank you very much for the introduction. Also, thanking to the organizers for having me here to give this presentation about our work on self-healing materials. Uh, self-healing materials is something uh, for the last 10 years. So in all kinds of uh, areas, they are developing materials that repair themselves. Uh, I'm from Delft University, working in the micro lab. It's a lab where we do uh, inventions on building materials. Uh, we also developed the self-healing concrete, but you saw already a picture of that at Dr. Gauget's uh, presentation, where we use bacteria to repair concrete. Uh, but now I'm going to talk about self-healing asphalt. And we're doing that development with a lot of students, uh, postdocs, PhD students. Two of them I put here also on the presentation, uh, Shishu and Martin Magella. And together with them, I'm also building up a company now uh, called Epion to bring self-healing uh, asphalt to the market. Um, so my presentation, I will first discuss the problem that we have with asphalt that we want to solve. Uh, I will have two solutions for you, and then I will tell a little bit about the future. So go to the problem. Um, asphalt it gets damaged in time. It's a material that ages, and of course this aging we want to fight. Um, especially potholes that we get, we want to fight them, because potholes are something we would like to stop. We don't like them, and I also saw that you have a lot of them here in Estonia, so it's not only in the Netherlands where we have them, but they are actually all over the world. And potholes are not nice to drive on, because they also ruin your pizza. If they come and deliver it, and the pizza driver is Going through a pothole, then uh, you will get a pizza like this, that it's uh, sticking to the box. So what we want to do is heal our asphalt. We can use a plaster, as shown here, but we developed some uh, more interesting techniques that work better. Well, in the Netherlands, a lot of our road surfaces are covered with SOAP, which is a very porous asphalt. Um, so most of the highways have this as top layer, uh, because it's a very good asphalt, of course, it's draining water. That's what we use it for. And it's also absorbing noise. So that's why it's a very good road to drive on. But the durability of this pavement, of this top layer, is not that good. Because every benefit comes with something which is negative. So the driving conditions are perfect, but we have a mechanism in this asphalt that is called reveling. Uh, so this mechanism also happens in dense asphalt roads, but especially in these porous asphalt roads, we have a lot of reveling, so that, which means the stones coming off of the surface. And this we want to prevent. So for that, we developed a self-healing technology, which can be applied on all asphalt surfaces, actually. So reveling in this porous asphalt means that um, you have only a small amount of binder between your aggregates, as you see in this picture, and this binder will age especially due to oxidation, UV light, uh, this uh, small layer of uh, bitumen will uh, become hard, it will become brittle, it will shrink, get micro cracks, and then delaminate from the aggregates. So that's the system that causes reveling. So as I say, sunlight and especially the UV light of the sun, together with some rain and maybe some snow, especially here, some loading on it, then you will get reveling. So it starts with uh, some small stones coming off of the surface, as you see here, especially in, in curves, you have this problem. But then it leads to potholes, and this is what we want to prevent. These potholes we don't like. Um, and in Canada, actually, they say they don't have potholes. So they use stickers to slow down the traffic. So they, they put those stickers showing a pothole to slow down the traffic. But of course, in other countries, like also in the Netherlands, they use the 3D technique. They make the real pothole to slow the traffic down. But actually, we don't want these potholes. 
So what is the solution to uh, overcome this? Well, the solution, first solution that we came up with is very simple. So you have to use tools from the kitchen. So what we do is we use steel wool, steel wool, these steel wool pads that you use to clean pans. So we cut them in small pieces and mix them through the asphalt. And then we use induction energy, an induction coil, to actually heat up the steel wool. So the induction coil, the same, similar thing as you do with uh, cooking, uh, such a coil, you can heat up the steel wool, hold the induction coil a little bit above the surface, heat up the steel wool, this will melt the bitumen, it will close the small cracks, and your stones stay where they are. Of course, you have to do this before the stones come off, because you cannot put the stones back. So you have to do this treatment just before the stones are driven out of your road. So if you have micro cracks in your system. So here you see the principle. So you have these fibers um, mixed into the asphalt. Um, if you get a small crack in the system, uh, you come with your induction coil, you heat up, the material, so from the inside out, it heals up the steel wool, that will melt the bitumen, and that will close the cracks. So here you see a sample that we put in a CT scanner to see the distribution of these very fine steel wool particles in the material. So it's a very well distributed in the material. As I said, then we come with an induction coil, you hold above your sample, uh, that creates actually a magnetic field, then small eddy currents are going to flow in uh, through these fibers, uh, then the fibers will heat up due to that eddy current. It will heat up the bitumen and close the cracks. So this is a test system that we use in the lab. Uh, so a small induction coil that we have there to test our samples and then we check with infrared cameras what is happening to see how much the temperature increases. So actually we did a lot of tests on these materials. We did aging of the samples in the lab, uh, damaged them, uh, heal them again and then see what uh, properties we get back afterwards. So this is actually an example of a four-point bending fatigue test where we uh, plot on the vertical axis um, uh, the flexural stiffness and on the horizontal axis the amount of cycles that we do. And you see if you, um, if you uh, do the cycles, your stiffness will decrease uh, if you do nothing. And if you uh, stop the test here, heat up the sample, your stiffness will come back, and you can do this test over and over. So you damage the sample, heal it, and you can test it again. So we did this on uh, normal samples, on age samples, and see what kind of uh, differences we got and how it improved. Uh, also, the government, Rijkswaterstaat in the Netherlands, they saw what we are doing, and they said, well, we have to try this out. So they gave us, in 2010, already a test section a part of a highway in the south of the Netherlands where we could uh, place 400 meters of asphalt and then test it over the years, heal it over the years, and uh, also monitor it. So this was when we were uh, placing the material in 2010. Um, so it's normal asphalt pavement machines you need, normal mixing plants. Just add these steel wool fibers, small fragments to it, and mix it through. Um, so then after four years, we thought this is the time we have to do the first treatment. That came out of our lab research. After four years, we went there with a small induction machine, a prototype that we built um, to heat up the asphalt. So you go there with uh, your induction coil driving over the surface, just a few centimeters above the surface. This heats up the steel wool, which heats the bitumen, but you don't heat up the stones that you also see in this uh, infrared image that your stones actually keep cold, which is good because you don't want to heat up the stones. You don't want to put energy in there. And also the stones will cool down your asphalt as quick as possible. So it, it moves over and 15 minutes later it's cold again because that's what the stones do. So in this way you can close all micro cracks, all your stones are fixed again, and you can open the road and drive on. Um, so here you see again, we also found a black hole while we were driving over the asphalt. So here you see the black hole. That was actually where we drilled some cores after we made the pavement, and that uh, hole was filled with normal asphalt, without steel fibers. So you see already that you cannot heat up the asphalt when there are no steel fibers, because you heat up the steel and not the asphalt itself. Um, 
So this was uh, three years ago. We went there with a small induction machine, just a prototype, and we are now building with this small company. I said, we are building a big one that we can drive uh, at a relatively higher speed, because the first one was just walking speed. We want to go somewhat faster with this big induction machine, heat up the road, and then uh, see if that really works. Um, so here are the facts. So you see a test track was built in uh, 2010, 400 meters. It was healed in 2014. Condition this year, it's still in perfect condition, no raveling, all the stones are still there. And uh, we think healing is needed every three or four years. Maybe if the asphalt ages, you have to go back uh, far, f uh, faster. Uh, it's applied already on 12 other locations now in the Netherlands. Um, on small roads and industrial areas where you have heavy load traffic, on roundabouts, on, uh, at traffic lights, and at bridge joints is also applied. Because bridge joints, they're open and close very frequently to get damage there, and with this system you can heal them very easily. And similar research is also being done in other countries, so it's really uh, becoming popular now. Um, there is also some problem with it, because your asphalt is actually still aging. So you don't prevent the aging of the material. Uh, so that's why you probably have to go back faster and faster when the material gets older. But to be overcome this aging, we're working on a different approach, which is a capsule approach, where we actually put small capsules in the material with rejuvenator inside. So you can put rejuvenator later on on the aged bitumen, but you can also put the capsules already inside your material. So the capsules contain the rejuvenator. If you get a crack again, this opens uh, the capsule, rejuvenator comes out and then softens the binder and make it more flexible again. So this is also something we are working on. We made different, si different capsules, uh, bigger ones, millimeter size. We made very small ones. And now we are working on alginate capsules uh, where the rejuvenator is inside. And these actually work quite nice because they, they survive the mixing, they survive the high temperatures, and they break when they are needed. And we also can put them in fibers so that you make fiber-like uh, capsules with pockets of rejuvenator inside. Um, so what is the future, what we are working on? Because also this capsule work is not perfect because this diffusion of the rejuvenator is a quite slow process. Only if you increase the temperature, then it goes much faster. Then the diffusion of the rejuvenator in the aged material, rejuvenating it is much faster. So what if we combine those two solutions? What if we combine um, the two healing techniques? So with the induction energy, we put the steel fibers in there, we put the capsules in there with rejuvenator, so we can heat up uh, the road with the induction energy, heat up the fibers, this will melt the bitumen, close cracks, and also open the capsules with rejuvenator, which then rejuvenates the binder. Since the binder is warm, uh, the diffusion goes very fast, and everything should be perfect after that. So uh, that's what we are trying out now and in the lab, and that also shows very good results up to now. So combining the two techniques, that's the future. And we also want to think about really future roads, so also the forever open road. What if we combine these uh, self-healing techniques, self-healing asphalt, um, with solar roads? So because we also need energy for the self-healing techniques. And we could even put the induction coil, which we now have externally, which we drive over the road. We could already put an induction coil in the road. Then you can use this induction coil for heating up the asphalt, but you can also use this induction coil to charge electrical vehicles. And if you do that with energy from the solar panels next to the road, you get a system that is uh, working by its own. So that's how we think about the future, so to make roads in, in this way. And with that, I think I come to my conclusions, uh, which says that self healing is not just a hype. Maybe it started 10 years ago with a hype, people wanted to do research on it, um, but now it really works. It really works, but it needs input from different disciplines. So you have to combine different disciplines to get it working. So we work with asphalt people, but we also work with electrical engineers to optimize 
uh, the induction coils and optimize just induction heating. So you have to combine different disciplines. If it works, you can also save a lot of money because you need less repair work, uh, less material use, uh, less traffic jams you have, that is also good for the environment. And with that, I would like to thank you for your attention. Thank you. Very fascinating. Do we have a question? One question we have, front row question. Here we go. We get the mic. Thank you. Uh, really, really good presentation. Uh, Steve Phillips, Conference European Directors of Roads. Um, you talked about self-healing, and, 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 and I totally understand the concept. I'm just wondering, have you any thoughts, maybe now or in the future, of moving into the other aspects, such as we heard earlier about rutting. There's also questions of loss of skidding resistance. Is, is the thoughts about applying this technology or variations of the te this technology to reduce in the other aspects of pavement damage? Uh, rotting, I don't know. Um, so it works for raveling that we see, that you can sell a feeling, you can sell a field cracks, also at grid joints. Rotting is maybe another problem, but what we also saw is if you add fibers to the material, um, it becomes, you, it can handle much more strain. So the strain capacity is also much better because also the fibers, although it are very thin steel wool fibers, it also works mechanically. So maybe that will help for the rotting. I hope that answers your question. Thank you. Hey, yes.